to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Hey, welcome to another episode. I'm Marcus. I'm Amy. We have a very special guest today, Vanessa. Hello. I'm Vanessa. Happy to be here. I'm excited to be here. (laughs) We are very happy you are here. Now, Vanessa... And I probably have only known each other now for a little over a month. And I met Vanessa on the um, Sugar Daddy, quote unquote, website. If you want to find out about some of these things that we're talking to, we're going to have links to that on our website. And if you'd click there, that would let them know where you found them. So that'd help us out a lot too. So go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com. Let's talk to Vanessa. Here I am. What How old are you, know? Vanessa? I'm uh, 23. Oh, you're a young one. <laughs> Spring <Pretty> chicken. Young. <laughs> but you know, at 25, you might as well kill yourself as a woman. So. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, Vanessa, you're from the East Coast. I am. And prompted you to get on a dating, I guess, app website such as this. Well, so I had a girlfriend that was, was on it, and she was always like never working and had a great (laughs) lifestyle and I never really understood it and so eventually I kind of pressed her about it I just didn't know if like she came from money or something and so I am a competitive bodybuilder and she she was too and she lived a lifestyle that you know in what I do you kind of have to do it full-time and I saw that she was doing it full-time and I just wanted to know like what's the secret and so she explained to me she's like well I am on this website and I have sugar daddies. And at first I was kind of like, mm, <laughs> Every, everyone's initial reaction. That. I was like, I'm not really into like, you just think of like an old, saggy, disgusting, mm-hmm. smelly dude. That's like, <laughs> yeah. going to give We're you We're trying to break that stigma. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I get it. And so, I mean, that was what I thought it was, but I, I'm just like a curiosity killed the cat. So I mm-hmm. looked on the, got on the website I think I like opened it and I was like, no, I can't do this. This is weird. And how and, long ago was this? Uh, maybe like two years ago. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. And I opened it back up and I had like a thousand messages or so. It's not, not, oh, wow. not a thousand, but a lot of messages. Mm-hmm. And so I went through them and I was like, whoa, these guys are like normal. Mm-hmm. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From yeah. what I know. And so like I was, I was super scared at first. Uh, my first, my first arrangement, I, I think I met him for coffee or something. And it was like, I told one person, I was like, this is going I'm so afraid like I'm gonna like make sure the police know where I am this kind of thing and I got there and I was like what the heck am I upset about or what am I worried about this guy is like completely normal he literally all he wants is a relationship that is way more like beneficial but not like that sounds sort of um like selfish from his point of view or from mine but just he wants a something with somebody that is exactly what he's looking for and if it's not then he's going to go look for it somewhere else and give that person exactly what they're looking for. So anyway, we ended up having like a a long-term arrangement, but we had coffee and we genuinely had chemistry. He was like a young-ish, he was probably in his 40s, good-looking guy, super fit. And also I had the realization, I was like, whoa, like people go on Bumble all the time and they meet these weirdos that offer them absolutely nothing. In fact, probably like they're going to be a fuck boy that's going to break their heart or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they get nothing from it and they have sex with them on a different, on a, a different one every day, which is fine. You know, sleep with whoever you want. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I really don't. Want. Yeah. But he, he basically wanted a girl that had, you know, chemistry with him, had fun with, and in exchange, like he just didn't want the emotional baggage. And so being supporting me financially, not paying for sex, gave him the ability to sort of have the power in the in that dynamic of not having that emotional responsibility and like women are crazy. So <laughs> to not have the the craziness of dealing with a woman. And so that's kind of how I got started. And then I was like, whoa, I actually like this. Like I prefer this. It lets me have my life entirely. And then also happens to pay for the lifestyle that I really want to live. And then you and I ended up I've ended up meeting some of the most amazing people on there. Like when I get on Bumble and Tinder, I have about like a two day span of where my patience is. Seeking arrangements, the people have amazing stories. They're successful. They've, you know, created lives for themselves. They have, they have a, they have depth because they've come to a realization that they just don't give a a fuck about um, like what people think and this is what they want and they're going to get it. 
And I think that's incredible. Now with your lifestyle, or I guess with your career choice, you're, you know, you're a trainer, you, you train multiple times a day, you're a bikini model, you look amazing. So fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. To meet a girl like you on Bumble or Tinder would be a tough thing. Actually, the ratios of men versus women on those type of apps is so skewed. I don't know. I've heard numbers before four to one, five to one, six to one men to women, where it's opposite on the site that we use. It's and, actually four to one. And so, really? Is it also yeah. on Bumble? Is it Bumble that the women have to initiate the conversation first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've used that one. I've met a couple people on there, but there's just not enough information to go on. And again, a lot, a lot of those people are looking for full, full blown relationships. Or okay. just, well, I'm sorry to cut you off, but oh. the only thing I was going to say is they're either looking for full-blown relationships to the point that it's like, oh my God, I, I just met you. I don't want to move in with you. Mm -hmm. Or they are just looking for sex. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed on Seeking Arrangements is it has this stigma of like, you're looking for a hooker, but it's the complete opposite. I found that most men on that website, it's not what they're looking for. Of course, mm -hmm. there's like a sexual component to it, right. but they actually just want somebody that there's like a level of intimacy like without the emotional responsibility that I said. Mm -hmm. Right. And so with what I'm curious about is how you've tailored your, have you tailored your, like tweaked your profile since then? A little bit. Because try to weed out, you know, the ones that, because there are guys out there that do well, Her profile that. is pretty short and sweet. And of course she's got a couple beautiful pictures on there and, and you just get inundated by yeah. messages, I'm wow. sure. <laughs> I get a, I, on mine particularly, the only thing that I, have to weed through I mean of course there's there's weirdos everywhere but yeah. the only thing that I really have to weed through is muscle worshipers there's a lot of muscle worshipers on there that I have oh, really? to, what do you mean by that it's just I mean I guess it's like a fetish that people have they like are obsessed with women who have muscle okay and it's like we you know they they want to know one if I have like a big clit if I have a deep voice <laughs> <laughs> like, like you know everything that oh, goes wow. along with like female bodybuilding right. that's the only thing that my profile does like really attract just because I am like a fitness girl and I carry more muscle than most mm -hmm. chicks and I'm not even that muscular but that's the kind of stuff that's the only like creepy thing I really have to weed through on my particular right. from what my profile says so you told me that recently you were in a, a traditional type relationship mm -hmm. and how did that go <laughs> oh I hated it <laughs> <laughs> where did you meet him at I actually I met him on bumble okay yeah it was um it was a huge mistake because I think that something that if something that I really love about seeking arrangements is you get to kind of see people like with their mask off because yeah. it's this dark, it's like this dark thing that, you know, you don't really want to admit to the world that you did. So all bets are off as far as like hiding the bad parts of your personality. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you're in a relationship in the real world, you have to be on your best behavior for a certain amount of time yeah. And then, you know, you find you out they're a shit person or something yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> you find that this type of relationship or this type of dating, it's a lot more open and honest from the very get-go. Yeah, and so it lays the groundwork. I mean, so I've met people on the site that I've had, I wouldn't say like full-blown relationships, with, but definitely emotionally involved, like we really cared for each other, sure. you know. I don't think we've ever said I love you, but I have like love for them, I'd say. Absolutely. Because it yeah. started out in such a real raw point that we didn't have to, it's kind of like you idealize this person when you first meet them on a traditional dating sense, and then all of a sudden you find out that they're not that great. If you know they're not that great from the start, everything you find out after that is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very, very good point, yeah. So have you been catfished? Like what kind of... Uh... I actually have been super lucky. Yeah. I have not had... I know girls that have had really terrible experiences on there. I have not. But I will say I'm much more picky in who I will speak to or meet up with. Like to me, if someone has an inkling of anything, even if their grammar is a little bit weird or they send messages in a strange way, it's just not worth it right. to me. Because I know they're like that website can attract some freaks mm -hmm. um, and flakes too. So yeah. I'm very, very picky about who I will, you know, get to the step of meeting up for coffee. They have to just seem like genuine and normal and that we're looking for the same thing. I don't like to get to the, you know, maybe meet up for coffee or meet up for lunch or something and then find out that they're looking for a completely different thing than what I'm looking for because then we just wasted both of our times and now it has to be this like weird, awkward interaction or something. So 
I, I can only sign up for the site at a, about a month at a time. And then that's, that's all I can do. It's just, it's a little overwhelming. It's almost like you're going on interviews every mm-hmm. time you go meet somebody for coffee or a drink or dinner. I, I actually stopped doing dinners because what I found out is I'm spending all this money. And then as soon as they show up, I'm like, this might've been a big mistake. <laughs> and now I've got to sit through dinner with them. So now yeah. I just limit it to um, hopefully just a drink or two and or coffee. It's a numbers game, and interestingly enough, I sent you a message, and your, I mean, of course, your profile was beautiful. I mean, who doesn't want to date a bikini fitness model, well, right? You're pretty crazy, so a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it looked good to me. So anyway, you messaged me, not on the site, but directly to my number very quickly, and I was kind of surprised. Well, something that I'm really big on, because... I am not interested in like a pen pal. Like to to me, I want to get off the site immediately. That site one is incredibly hard to use. Like Mm -hmm. the formatting is just bad on it. And so I also want to know that like you're actually serious as much as I am, because if I'm on there, I'm actively looking for an arrangement of a particular kind with a particular person. So why do I want to waste all this time talking to all these people that 90% are not going to work out? So I sort of like to weed that out, just text Mm -hmm. because if the person is willing to text it usually means they're a little more serious and then sometimes i'll be like do you want to talk on the phone or do you want to meet for coffee Mm -hmm. like that day that week in the next two days because otherwise it just goes on they'll drag yeah they'll drag it out yeah and it's like then even through text message i've had uh, like right now i have a guy that's like he just that's all he wants to do and i'm just like okay i can't talk to you anymore and that's (laughs) the other thing is like if you're looking for a relationship like or you know like a dating situation like that where you're constantly texting back and forth then i'm not the girl for you because i don't i don't even if that is like the criteria i cannot meet that criteria Mm -hmm. so if i sense that from the beginning it's just like (laughs) that's 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 not gonna work for me (laughs) yeah Yeah, i'll send you a text and three days later i'll get a response but no i'm kidding she actually does get back to me you can't (laughs) guys you cannot blow a girl's phone up that is just a, a big rule and there's also limitations on, um, you know, like if they're out of town, like I tend to date a lot of out of towners, mm-hmm. um, just because of my schedule and I'm better with out of towners. Yeah. Um, but how many times have you met somebody and they seemed kind of normal in the beginning and then they just blow your phone up nonstop? Yeah. That just happened. Yeah. It just happened. <laughs> it's, it's, no. Um, and where is that guy now? <laughs> yeah. He's, He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Canceled. Yeah. He can't, yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Yeah. That was that was a very interesting situation. He um, asked me to move in, like after like four he times don't. of hanging out. Wow. Moved in. He like was wanted marriage, like all that. And he, I told him from the very get go, I'm like, I'm here. You know, I'm only here for a short time. <laughs> I'm not here for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but I've noticed that um, more recently on the site, it seems. I think the Bumble and Tinder world has been inundated with just, like, people who suck. Yeah. And, see, uh, I mean, like, the site has sort of become something that's a little bit more well-known. Like, I know a lot more people that are aware of it, yep. even than two years ago when I started, started, you know, on the site. And I think that younger guys have figured out that women are more likely to sleep with them on that or it's easier yes. to sleep with them you know let's say on the first date but they are kind of like hustling the system a little bit you know what i mean yes. they don't they're not actually sugar daddies looking for an arrangement they're looking to date yeah and it's being used a little bit more like a dating site which i think is like kind of screwed up yeah it's not meant to that's be that's not way. what it's and that's yeah. not what it's there for so with that being said let's talk about this is now, this is the part that I'm not good at, and he knows this. Like, in your experience, like, what what do you consider, like, bad, like, a good arrangement? I, you know what I mean? Like, beneficial. Like an ideal arrangement? Yeah. An ideal arrangement for me is someone that I get along with incredibly well. That is, that's the most important for me, mm-hmm. is that every time it's not like, oh, my God, I have to go see this person. <laughs> yes. Like, and they... And, uh, they have to have their own life. That's a big thing. Like I, right. I am very attracted to people who have a lot going on because I have a lot going on. So if you don't have a lot going on, 
there's going to be points where you're like, why can't you hang out with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so right. I like people are very busy. Mm-hmm. And then, so when you do spend time together, you like cherish it a bit more. Yeah. You know, we just have to have obviously some things in common where you can have good conversation, good chemistry, things like that. And then have to be looking for the same thing out of it. Like a great arrangement to be would be an allowance where we don't talk about it. It's not like a weird, every right. time I see you, this is how much you're going to get because this PPM. is your worth. That's the PPM no. crap. I, to me, it's like, it's not, it's not an allowance like for you to see me. It's yeah. that you are like, we get along really well. Mm-hmm. You are getting the benefit of having someone who's like young and beautiful and into you and genuinely into you mm-hmm. and no emotional responsibility of having to deal with a crazy woman because Women are women are crazy. <laughs> We're emotional. Yeah, <laughs> so um, emotional. And then it's just like a you're helping me out because you genuinely see like my potential and you want to. Yeah. It's not some dynamic of like this is what you're worth, so this is what I'm gonna pay you. Yeah. See, that's what that's what bothers me now with this site because I've been on the site. I got on. God, I can't remember. Sorry, five years ago, roughly. It has dramatically changed since yeah. then. I mean, even in the past two years. Yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned last episode, I believe, about the site How getting much it's younger. Changed. Yeah, right. it's getting younger. But, like, that's what they're wanting that the younger guys, they're just wanting to pay, like... Like $300. P- like PPM or something. Crap. Yeah. And I'm just... That is just so... I know. It's, it's not a business so transaction. Yeah, it's not a business you wanna, transaction. I mean, or anything, I so. don't... To me, I think sex work. I think sex work is just as good as any work. If you want to do that, by all means. But right. that's not what the site is for. Yes. You know, it's not. It's not like a see this, buy this website. Yes. It's an arrangement. It's a you know a relationship in a different aspect of yeah. what works for people's lives. Yeah. Well, and and you'll find that on Tinder, right. and, and even Facebook dating, you'll find people that match, and all they're wanting is they're they're just basically a prostitute. Yeah, so you'll find that across all the, the dating apps. And what I found when I first signed up for this site, like I guess in 2016, was it was a learning curve because I didn't realize the extent or, or I guess the range of what people are looking for on the site. And you kind of have to figure out what range you want and match with somebody that's in that same range. That's part of the reason I think that like, um, like I'll normally talk to somebody on the phone or text I prefer to usually talk on the phone. We didn't, Marcus, we didn't talk on the phone. No. But I just got a good feeling. You were a very normal person. I could tell from the way that you talked that I didn't really feel the need to do, like, to sort of have that buffer phone call. (laughs) And it was super Uh, fast, right? You guys. Yes. It was. Yeah, it was very quick. She messaged. She was very good at communicating. Yeah. Yeah. A a lot of people in the very beginning, you're trying to set something up and it's Um, just a nightmare of trying to get things coordinated, but you were very good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the girls will go hours without messaging back yeah, and, it's and i'm like, trying I know to plan my phone. day like come on yeah. everyone's yeah. addicted to their phone yeah nowadays. you see them online <laughs> and you're like come on i need to plan my day here yeah, exactly. you just answer me back because i've got yeah. i am a busy guy i've got a lot going on yeah yeah uh like so generally i'll like to talk to someone on the phone because i think what's what is really cool about that website is i know lots of girls i'm pretty open about the fact that i'm on the site i think a lot of girls keep it a secret but as soon as, you know, with people, if you do something that's kind of taboo and then you tell them, they feel comfortable telling you that they do it too. So I've met a lot, <laughs> I've met a lot of girls that are like, don't tell anyone, but this is what I do. Yeah. I'm like, okay, girl, I know I've been there for a while. <laughs> yeah. And let me tell There's you a nothing story. Wrong with it. Yeah. But like, I've heard of all different scenarios that people are on that site. And that's what I think one of the greatest things about it is, is I think for the most part, it's generally what, you know, maybe you and I are talking about Amy, where you want something that's not super involved and like a strict arrangement. But I also, I know of women that are on there because they are very successful women and they only want to date very successful men men because they want to weed out the, any, anything less than that. That's how I originally got on the site. Oh really? Yeah. I was like what I was doing before I was making really, really good money. And I just was so tired of dating people that were using me. Essentially, they're just losers. Or can't keep up with your lifestyle. Yeah. You know, like were, just could not do it. So that's what initially got me on. And then it wasn't until I moved here that I actually like changed changed that direction because yeah. of what I'm. Well, in the first going month I was on the site, I actually was almost done with my membership for for that month, and I was just going to let it expire. And I got a message from. Um, young girl. She was 21. At the time, I think I was 48. So I'm thinking, 
oh, I just don't have anything in common. Like, what can a 21-year-old offer me at this point? She's like, just let's go to sushi. Let's. Say, I just think I like your your profile. I think we, we have a good time. So I reluctantly went and met her. We shared stories. I was... <laughs> I was telling her about my family dynamic, which was kind of a Brady Bunch family. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom and dad, uh, you know, had kids, and then they came together, and we all became one big family. And she looked at me, and she goes, I, I don't know who the Brady Bunch is. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> so I'm well, thinking, she's just uncultured swine. Yeah, no, something okay. like that. <laughs> oh so my I'm thinking, wow, there is, a, there is a difference in age here, and I, I wasn't prepared for that, for people not to understand kind of my – my culture and my growing up. So that was kind of a shock to the system. But anyway, we went on a sweet, sweet girl, absolutely drop dead gorgeous. And she flat out told me, I'm not looking for anything financial. I'm actually looking for somebody older and successful and that I eventually want to marry. Yeah. So that I put her at the very end of one end of that range of what people are looking for. And then I've had others tell me, can we just skip the dinner and go right to the bedroom? Yeah. That's not what I'm looking for either. But it's and, what they're looking for. Yeah, but and that's what they're looking for. there are men on there that are looking for the same thing. Yeah. Kind of to that point, a guy that I met on there, he was crazy, crazy successful. And a very, very good looking, like charming, kind of kind of like what's wrong with you, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. <sort of> scenario. <laughs> and uh, we were seeing each other for a while, and I asked him, I was just like, why the heck are you on this site? Like, I know for a fact that women are throwing themselves at you. He's like, yeah, but when you get to my age, they're either really, really dumb young girls or they are, like, older women that have a ticking time bomb sort of thing. And he said, I love this site because it gives me, you know, he's like, I am getting older. And he was probably, like, 47, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he said... It gives me a zest for life. Like there's something that young women on this site happen to carry that they don't have that jadedness that older women my age date or just like dumb girls that are, you know, (laughs) that he meets out at a bar or something. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. Like you're really not looking for a fine, like a financial sort of set. Like you're not looking for sex at all. You're looking for someone to give you like a zest for life. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, a lot of the men on there, that's what they're looking for. I mean, a lot of them are married, married men that kind of they've lost it in the bedroom like there's their wives i cannot the best ones that i've not the best marcus you're the best but uh (laughs) uh, some of the some of the other good ones that i've had they actually end up they are married and it's i prefer that so much more because yeah i agree one i think they're very aware of women's feelings because they've gone through like the trials and tribulations with their wives but you don't have they're not like there to change your life, I guess. Yeah. But then you also see the spark, like they become very playful and this whole new side kind of comes out and it's really, really amazing to just like experience that with them. Yeah. And then it's just like, you feel like a kid again. I don't know. I, I like seeing that. You know, it's eyes. like, it's so interesting that you, s- so one of my longest arrangements was with a married man and I kind of, and when he would talk about his wife, he would talk about her like she was just the most glorious, like, we were we had an interesting dynamic because you know there was a sexual aspect, but we were like buds, yeah, like almost like bros. Like yeah. we would just joke. We had so much fun together, and we talked about everything. Like I was dating, you know, in the quote unquote real world, mm-hmm. while we were seeing each other, and he would ask me all about it. It was a very open uh, arrangement, but and he would talk about his wife like she was just the love of his life, yeah. and I asked him, I was like, so why are you why are you why are you here? You know, if you love your wife so much, he's like this is what made my marriage successful. He said, I was going to, I couldn't, he's like, I just couldn't have, I couldn't have sex in the same position every night with the lights off. And he said, I adore my wife to, like, more than anything. I've never, I've really never heard a man talk about loving the qualities of her yeah. so much. And he's like, and this is what keeps our marriage alive because she doesn't have to know about this. I take care of her in every aspect. And it, it means nothing, which sounds like sad for me, but it, it means nothing in that aspect. It doesn't take away from the love that he has for her. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You've actually actually had arrangements with a couple married men too, huh? Yeah. And how's that, gone? How's that been for you? How's it been for me? I mean, I mean so I, me personally, I don't, I couldn't, there's no way I could do that when I was married. So I never explored it. Yeah. So this is a kind of the first point of view that I'm getting 
what it oh yeah this is i guess we haven't really talked about mm-hmm. that have we no i would say like for me it's you know kind of goes just based off of what she's saying like it's you know they they really do care about their wives like they'll they'll straight up say like i will i will never leave her like they'll they'll come out and say it. now i will say i did recently just had a guy like like two days ago mm-hmm. and we've hung out a couple of times and he I asked him flat out. I'm like, there is nothing that you could say or do that would like scare me. Like, just be honest, be transparent. And he was like, I was like, are you married? And he said, no, no, no. He kept saying no. (laughs) And then he sends me this message and he's like, oh, I just want to, he's like, I want to let you know that I am married. I'm like, oh, you little, you little turd. I've had the same situation. They're so ashamed. They really are. And so I like, I tried because. I guess the bad side of that is it could destroy a marriage. Well, he said, he was like, there's something, he's like, when I met you, he's like, you bring, you brought life Mm -hmm. into something that I haven't haven't felt in a really long time. And he just, he was like, well, would you continue seeing me? And I was like, well, I said, we'll have to have coffee or something. And we're at the, we haven't had coffee yet, but I was supposed to have coffee with him at some point and just talk about it. Cause I, I want him to be able to express himself, but I want to let him know that it's okay on this site. It is because he's never dated on this site before. Mm -hmm. It's okay to let girls know, like the more, the more that you get in touch with your feelings and are more, more comfortable with your truth and you can express that, the more likely you're going to find somebody that's going to be a really, really good match. Because there are so, like you said, there's such a broad spectrum. Well, and there. honesty. Honesty is, does play is a big a, role. an openness. Yeah. I think that is, this site has taught me personally a lot about just interpersonal relationships in general. And like kind of finding myself in that, that, you know, when in these arrangements, it's very easy to be honest because there isn't that emotional responsibility. So it's kind of like, well, if I say something that they don't like, I really don't care because yeah. whatever, you know, it's, it's not, it's yeah. not like I'm emotionally invested in this. I'm not going to get my heart broken. I can say whatever I want. If right. you don't like me, well, screw you. So when you but, were, so going from that to, uh, we're going to get back into your regular relationship because I've experienced something similar just recently as well. Do you find it hard to transition from going from being so open, so honest to having to like dating on Hinge or Bumble? And then having to just like shut down almost. Yeah. Yeah. It almost, it, it, what did that feel like? It w- at first it was like really nice and it kind of felt like innocent in a way, you know, cause I'm, I'm just not the kind of person that has the space for a relationship in my life. I don't want it. I don't crave it, but I just happen to, you know how girls are. When we feel ugly about ourselves, we get on a dating app and we talk to a couple guys <laughs> and then we feel better about ourselves. Yeah. So it was, I was having a hard night and <laughs> I uh, hung out with this guy. We like went for a walk and went for a walk. <laughs> um, and I was like, wow, that was like way better than I wanted it to be. So we ended up, you know, keep on seeing each other, how things go or whatever. And there were like, at you know, he would ask me, oh, what did you do with your day today? And I kept my arrangements up while we were dating. There was a point where we got really serious and into our relationship that I ended my arrangements because I didn't feel right about it, like lying to him and also kind of living the double life. Mm-hmm. But in the beginning, I kept them. And he'd be like, oh, what did, what did you do with your day? And I was like, this guy doesn't know me because such a so much of a part of me has become like a human being and the person I am through seeking arrangements mm-hmm. because – I'm able to be so open and honest and actually learn that people like me when yeah. I'm open and honest. Yeah. And so I think that really probably was the detriment of our relationship because that carried over in so many other aspects because I couldn't be number one. Like I think like sexual intimacy is like the hinge of a relationship Absolutely. personally chemistry and then sexual chemistry. Sexual I can't talk sexual, chemistry. sexual <laughs> chemistry and intimacy. Yeah. And with this site, that is a given I mean, not the chemistry, but the intimacy of it. You know, you're open about what you want. And in that relationship, I had a lot of trouble asking for what I wanted because I was afraid of getting judged. I was afraid that he wouldn't want that, that, you know. And the inexperience, (laughs) that's what I've experienced. I'm like, well, you guys are way less <laughs> experienced. Yeah. And older, I just find that older men, they're just so more intuitive about a woman's body. They pay attention to the body. They pay attention. So young men out there. Pay attention to their bodies. Yeah. <laughs> They'll tell you if I they're mean, getting something there. Something else that's like, for me personally, I think for most women is being made to feel beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say worship because that makes it sound like a weird, 
like worship like kink. Com- yeah, kink <laughs> yeah. or something. But that for a woman in bed, that is one of the most important things is to make her feel like passion. She, yeah, that she is something that is giving you like a satisfaction that nothing else in the world can give you. Mm-hmm. That is what turns I would say maybe there are women out there that don't, but yeah. most women that is what like is the root of their yeah. their orgasm or you know whatever. Exactly. Men on that site they're almost like so grateful because they're so amazed by like these beautiful women that want them that and- want them and you know are into them and that they're getting to you know be intimate with and th- like that is way more satisfying sexually to me than yeah. banging some idiot who's like half drunk at a club <laughs> yeah. who has like big muscles yeah. and is really and three pumps and he's done right Right. yeah no it's i yeah i agree 100 percent. they they just want to quickly get to it and it's the taking the slowing down and just slow down and feel and be there and And enjoy each other sort of thing exactly yeah what's your experience what's been your experience with because you went on a, a regular date here recently oh it was horrible (laughs) (laughs) oh she was more my age it's Every now and then, anymore. I'll get on like a swiping session. And it's just right, 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 left, 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 right, right, right. I just do it to judge what people look like. <laughs> yeah, and so she was very, very attractive. I have a hard time for some reason getting people to respond on those other swiping apps just because the ratios are so high. They get so there's they just get bombarded with all kinds of men. So you're you're battling against so many people. She was more, I think she was a couple years younger than me. I was like, oh, great. We'll be able to talk about things and she can understand and relate. She came into it with so much baggage and just so much emotional scarring. And it was just, and then just kind of projected that on to me as I'm telling her story, she's rolling her eyes going like, yeah, right. You know, like my last relationship said that too, blah, blah, blah. Oh dear. <laughs> like, can we not just have a drink, enjoy each other's company, enjoy the conversation and just enjoy ourselves like does there have to be drama involved so that was a big bust and I couldn't get out of there fast enough (laughs) here's the funny thing though is as soon as we're done actually she ended it which didn't hurt my feelings she's like (laughs) okay well I've got to go and I'm like okay and then she accidentally texted me in the car when she was meaning to text somebody else like hey I'm out come meet me for a drink oh (laughs) Oh, my god (laughs) and she's like oops sorry (laughs) wrong person Oh, uh, no. And like, then I just made... that is can deal with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good I luck. I just <laughs> made light of it. I, I said, oh, don't worry. I've done that before, too. And she said, anyway, so that's how that ended, and we'll never speak again. Nice lady. Good career. Had her own money. But I just haven't had any luck. What what I find on this uh, being a, a, an arrangement-type site is... I, I meet the best people there, like truly quality people. I've, I've literally gone out with dentists, doctors, lawyers. I went out with somebody that was, um, she had recently became a, a PA, physician's assistant. She just has a lot of student loan debt. Yeah. And they're looking for a higher caliber person. Yeah, it's that's, so That's the biggest true. thing. Yeah. That is the number one. The, the girl I told you I met, uh, years ago, I was 21. She and I are still very close friends. She's now married, has two kids. She ended up marrying a guy off the site. We would meet occasionally just to, uh, over a drink or, or an appetizer and just talk about our lives. Yeah. And, and she still is kind of in, she'll sometimes message you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't talked to her in months, but I could call her up right now and we just start talking. It, 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 she's such a wonderful person. Great, great heart. Came from a very religious background, but... Funny story about her is she she was kind of naive, but she was living in Georgia at the time, and this guy used to fly her up there. He was in his 70s. He used to fly her up to New York, and she'd go to dinner with very high-profile people, even a past president, and he, he just enjoyed her time. There was no sex involved. Yeah. He just enjoyed her time. He gave her $50,000 cash, and she didn't know what to do with it, so when we met... <laughs> She is like, I don't know what to do with this money. <laughs> Can you help me invest it? So here I have a 21-year-old basically giving me $50,000 that I met on the site saying, here, help me with this money. Yeah. Now, I decided to pass on that because I just certainly didn't want to lose it, and I'm a little bit of a risky investor. So uh, I gave her some ideas on some safe investments. So it wasn't going to make her rich, but it was just fu- it's just a funny story that here is somebody that I didn't want to meet. I didn't think we'd have anything in common. 
she insisted that we meet because she just liked my profile and thought we'd have some, uh, you know, she'd enjoy it meeting me. And we're still friends to this day. It's so funny you say that. Every, like, long-term relationship that I've met outside of the site, I do not speak to them now. Like, you know, oh. now that we've broken up. It's not, maybe I don't hate them, but we don't speak. You know, mm-hmm. we don't catch up. We don't do that. But not every single arrangement. But if I called them and said, hey, how are you doing? We could catch up. And it's never, like, a hard feeling. It's just like, okay, this served a time and a place. And, it, you know, had its purpose. But, you know, we'll go on and I'm really happy for you and you know but then a lot of them are like some of my closest friends because they really know me mm-hmm. you know people that you're in like relationships with you know when you meet on Bumble or Tinder you know out whatever that you don't they don't really know the real you yeah you know and so there's like there's that intimacy uh like emotional intimacy that you have with these people that it's supposed to be no emotional baggage yeah. but you're actually way more emotionally intimate with them than you realize absolutely yeah. and it's it's really amazing. Like with him, I mean, we've been what how long, a year, year and a half. Yeah, I met I met you a year and a half ago after my two and a half year arrangement relationship ended, and I really haven't talked to you much about how Amy and I we like we started out in kind of a nice arrangement, but it's turned more into a, like a working type relationship <laughs> and a, like almost like a best friend type deal. Mm-hmm, yeah. We talk every there's day. She's every day. There's not every, a day I yeah. call him like uh, this weekend. <laughs> She'll tell me about her, the guys that she's meeting and I'll tell her, you know, what's going on in my yeah. life. And I actually really enjoy listening to the story. Matter of fact, she was doing something today. She didn't want to tell me because it was with a regular type relationship. Uh, yeah. And I said, no, tell me, <laughs> yeah. be honest. <laughs> Well, I don't yeah. want you getting upset. No, yeah. I, I want the truth, like be I more know. open and honest. I know, I know. It just was like one of those things <laughs> where, I don't know. I've talked about him before. It was, and it, it was <laughs> something that kind of ended, but kind of started back up. And yeah. she's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, it's just weird. But you met him where? Off of Hinge. Hinge, yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. find that? Uh, but there's no way you can be open and honest with me I about the, Yeah, that's the hard part. That's the part that is like killing me. I'm like, oh, I want to be so honest with this person. Yeah. But I, like, how do I, how do I say it? Like, I can't say it. Like, I had, it's been so long since I've been in a regular relationship that I'm like, I have no idea well, how to. Can I ask you this, yeah. Amy? For when I start dating, like, outside of, like, looking for an arrangement, I find that there's an impending sense of doom that when is the expiration point? Like, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, like, I always have one foot out the door. I'm like, no, yeah, but run. it's <laughs> not that case in arrangements. No. Yeah. Oh, it's like, no. let's just see how long this goes. But yeah. when... It re- takes the pressure off completely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And and that's what I felt like with this person. Then, and that's why it ended. And that's the question I was asking earlier is because like with that person, he actually told me... At one point, he was like, you're too open. He was like, you're too willing to be open, like, so quickly. And I was like, uh, I think that you should just let it all hang out, yeah. is what I told him. And if him. you don't like it, then... Then bye-bye. Like, uh, that's it. But, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, four or five months later, he's still around. But it's just, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like crap. <laughs> Some days, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't, I can't say this. But here recently... Like this, I don't know, we kind of ended it a little bit and then we kind of started talking again. And I've actually been able to be a little more, like he doesn't know about the sugar baby stuff, but, you know, I tell him like, oh yeah, I'm going on dates, you know, this, that, the other. And uh, you do tell him that. Yeah, yeah, I do tell him that. And it, I eventually want it to come out. I don't think he would reject me because he's dated, he's dated like porn stars. He's dated, Mm -hmm. you know, like Instagram models that have had multiple things i'm sure it wouldn't be a shock for him but it just i don't know i think uh, at the like the innocence thing you were talking about i adore that about it that's what i really adore uh because he's so naive (laughs) yeah but i I gotta teach him so much i'm like but i think that there's like uh women i believe okay well i believe that women are the most powerful thing in the world there is any if you look at any successful man in history they're is nothing that could take them down, but repeatedly in history, it's one woman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they exactly. might not have. There's a, a lot of truth to that. Yeah, yeah, they might not have a weakness for women in general. I mean, a lot of men, that's their, you know, they're chasing Taylor. <laughs> yeah. But for many men, like if you look at powerful men in history, 
they it may not be all, like all women, but there's one woman that really broke them. Yeah. And so women hold a huge amount of like power of manipulation. When you're in a relationship dynamic like Bumble Hinge and sort of a naturally occurring organic situation, I feel like women almost have to like exercise their manipulative powers because they have to get this guy to not think they're crazy or yeah. not think they're too into them or play exactly. this game. But on when looking for an arrangement, there you don't have to play that manipulative game. And so that wall is completely down. Yeah. You're not having to almost like or, try to be this guy's Achilles heel or something. Yeah, exactly. And I think men need to I think what I love about what I'm seeing just kind of change as well in the men that I'm meeting is they're doing a lot more self work. Like they're men use like it's 50, 50. I'll meet men that use their money as power as like a power dynamic. And they don't want to, they don't want to have that vulnerability or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm also like, I've tweaked my profile now to where it's like, I'm getting the more empathetic men. So I think that men just need, they need that. They need to be, they need to realize that yes, women are powerful, but we're as a sugar baby, we're really, I think a true sugar baby is not there to take advantage of you. Not at all. And I get it because there are men like him that have had, like Marcus has had an instance where a, a girl, a very beautiful woman, like, wow, this girl is Jesus, <laughs> took, took complete advantage of him. And even in my last arrangement, uh, you know, the girl took like 150000 I can't remember, like took his credit card and charged 150000 on it. And it was just, I mean, he like was so, it, it crushed him. Yeah. I mean, he, he had to hide it. Like he could never report it or anything of course. because of <laughs> him, because of his wife. But it was like, oh my gosh, that is just horrible. So he, so shortly after that's when he met me and it was just, you know, I was like, listen, I'm not here to take advantage of you. I, yeah. I, you know, make my own money. I don't need, I don't need that, but whatever you want, like want to give i just kind of want to get to know you and i want to know your circle um, well but and then marcus is you got to share share a little bit because we'll have on, more. i've got a few stories which okay. one are you referring to I'm which ref beautiful woman <laughs> which who took advantage of me are um, you referring was, to so for a shocker we could do a shocker the shocker you could do the shocker the one that you were like found on the internet and she scammed multiple men oh should we Dive into that now, or save it for the next I, I mean, episode. I guess we I could. feel like that could be a whole episode. That, I, mean, I, I don't know. really could. Yeah. You know what? Really we're we're going to tease the next episode. I'll <laughs> talk about that one on the next uh, episode because it is, it, it's quite a story. Oh, it's uh, she is an amazing con artist, and what? And we're going to get into through the series on different episodes. We're going to talk about the good and the bad on how to kind of avoid scams and uh, yeah. know when you're being scammed for women too. You guys get a lot of this, and I've I've well, met. Well, she said she hasn't really experienced it. That's I think that's well, really but the, amazing. She's get messages. You'll get messages oh, yeah. where I people just want your through. Yeah, yeah, you're smart enough. But there's a lot of desperate girls out there who yeah. says somebody's like, "Hey, I'm going to wire two thousand dollars to your account. I just yeah. need your information." I think SA has really targeted that. Like now, I don't even think you can bring. You can't even like bring up. There's certain words that will block Trigger your account. The, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Immediately. And you can't even like having a dollar amount of any kind or whatever. Like if you were to say that, they'll they'll block you. They'll oh, wow. immediately That's like really close down that account because they're really they're really trying to get rid of the the hookers and the prostitutes and yeah. people like that that are looking for that. That's I uh, sucks that back pages <laughs> closed because now they're like kind of flooding flooding this market yeah. and it's like no that's really not what it's about but anyways. well i'll tell you what we're gonna wrap this episode up my co-host amy you've been wonderful thank you vanessa vanessa you've been absolutely a blast thank you. I love being on. we're gonna have to have yeah. you come back i would love absolutely. to come back yeah. i feel like we've been here for 10 minutes i, I know, know. <laughs> it went re it went so quickly yeah but we, we got to save some good information <laughs> so people continue to to subscribe for that next episode don't, don't forget to visit our website. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. And you guys are going to learn a lot, hopefully. I, there's going to be some subjects about intimacy that we're going to want to get into. Men, how to be better at it. There are resources out there for you. Yes. So and our website, will have those. We'll have some links to those. Feel free. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Like, email us. We'll try to respond as quickly as we can. Yeah. Um, and if you want to be a story. guest, yeah. you want to be a guest on the show, Go go to the website. It's fun to be a guest, guys. I can tell you that. <laughs> Fill out the form. We'd love to have your stories. Be a guest in person. We can do it over the phone. But yeah, just 
it's going to be a lot of fun sharing. Click subscribe. And, and <laughs> click subscribe. Yeah. So that's it. Until next episode. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.